Shalom Mishmaka. This is another Shabbat and um, I hope you're all ready. You're getting ready. Shabbat preparation day. All get ready for the Shabbat. Today is a very, very auspicious day. It's a very, very different Shabbat. And it's a very um, special Shabbat for those that know it. And for those that don't know it, I want to tell you what really happened and what is really happening in the world today and in different religions and to warn you to be careful so that you will stick to what your creator wants and not to the majority. Turn with me to the book of Bed Neighbor chapter 13. That's the book of Numbers chapter 13. Let us read together from verse 1. And <clears throat> El Shaddai spoke to Moshe saying, Send me and send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Yeshua. Send one man from each tribe of their fathers, every one a leader among them. Now, I'm going to speak about the story of the spies, the twelve spies that were sent out to spy on the land on Canaan and to bring reports back to Moshe. Now, um. Um, if you observe that um, those are practice Judaism, you know that you understand that this is the period of mourning. They are mourning because of the report of the ten spies and not happy because of the report of Joshua and Caleb. This is where I tell you be very careful of religion. There is no single religion that will take put you on the path. To know your creator and to do the will, perfect will of your creator. If you remember the story vividly, you remember that because of the reports of the ten spies and because the children of Israel wanted to stone Moshe because of that report, they were very, very angry with that report. They, they said that so Moshe wants to take them to a land that will devour them, wants to take them to a land that eats his heaven and a lot of things. And they wanted to stone Moshe. And then because of that, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, El Shaddai, decided to punish them by, by saying, since they say that they are not able to possess the land, none of them are going to see the land. They are going to wander for 40 years in the wilderness and they will all die there. And according to the Torah, it is written that no one of that generation saw the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. Now, how can you accept to repeat the sin that your forefathers has done again? Now, those that are now following religion, they are mourning because of the report of the text. Does it make sense? Did you not learn from their mistake? When they were supposed to be happy with the fruit, with the sample that Joshua and Caleb brought, and said that this is a very beautiful land, this is a very good land, they were mourning. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. Which, of course, is not in your Bible, but it's in the Torah. Now, let me jump to verse 16. These are the names of the men whom Moshe sent to spy out the land, and Moshe called Hosea, the son of Nun, Yahushua. And Moshe sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said to them, Go up here into the Negev, and go up to the mountains, and see what the land is like. Let me stop here and continue. Now you can see very clearly. After the 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 what the let me jump to it. It says from the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, son of Raphu. So you can see that how they took no leaders. Then from the tribe of Yehuda, Caleb, son of Yefune, and of course naturally we can understand. Why Caleb is among those that you know that are among the warriors? Okay, let's continue. So, but first, Yehoshua called change Hosea's name to Yahoshua. Sorry, excuse me. Moshe <coughs> called Hosea son of Nun Yahoshua. He changed him. I know what Yahoshua means. Yah is salvation. That is, he puts the name of the Creator on him because he saw what was going to happen. So that he will be able to be strong and not join the multitude in their evil. Now I want to implore you, Mishpaka. 
don't join the multitude to commit the same sin our forefathers committed in the wilderness and made them not to see the promised land by mourning. You're supposed to be happy with the good reports. Now, in the other religion, they say that, which I don't want to mention specifically, they say that this is a bad month. It's a month of F, a month of mourning because of the report of the sex. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. This is a month of rejoicing, of the good report for Joshua and Caleb. Now I want to ask, which side are you going to be on? The side of the ten that perish in the wilderness, or the side of the two, Joshua and Caleb, that said good reports of what Hakadosh has given to them, and then they saw the promised land. I and my family, we are taking the side of Joshua and, uh, and Caleb, and believing the good reports, and believing the, on the good things that the Almighty is doing for us, and is already, has already done for us. I don't know about you. Now let me tell you what happened in the land. Now remember that the land of Canaan, giants, it was inhabited by giants, do you remember? The other ten said we were like grasshopper in their eyes and all those things. Now, the, a lot of statements that they made made the Almighty angry. First and foremost, how can they say that they were like grasshoppers in the eyes of those people? We are they in them to know how they look like. So they really downgraded themselves and also downgraded also the, or minimized the miracles that Hakadosh was doing for them. Now, this is what the Almighty did for them, which I told you, you've not seen the total complete story in your Bible. When they got to the land, he sent, the, the, um, El Shaddai sent, you know, um, death among them, sent an angel to start killing the giants. Because, of course, you as a human, you know that humans eat giants. Is there a way you will walk into the land of giants and come out alive? So the Almighty had to do something to distract them. And so what happened, you know, when the, the, the 12 spies entered the land of Canaan, they were in, in a state of mourning. The giants were mourning the dead. And then they were all going for one burial or the other. They were busy burying their dead. And this was what the spies saw. Most especially the 10 spies. No, this was what all the 12 spies saw. But the 10 spies now misinterpreted to say it's a land that eats its inhabitants. A land that devours its inhabitants. A land that kills the people living on it. That was their interpretation. They didn't listen to the rule. They didn't ask. They didn't go with the report and say, okay, Joshua and um, Moshe, this is, the land is actually fruitful. This is what we saw. So, yeah, this, are the, this is the sign that the land is very fruitful. But there was something strange we saw. Please, can you ask the Almighty, what does this mean? They did it. They just jumped to conclusions. I said, ah, ah, look at them. Look at them. They're burying people everywhere. See them. They're just dying. Ah, so we, we have come here to die. My brothers and my sisters, that's why I say if you read the Bible, you read the scriptures just like this, you will not understand anything. And it will also make you jump to wrong conclusions. And you even you may even insult people in the Bible that you may not, you're not supposed to insult. Say, how can you talk like that? How can you do like that? Because a lot of things have been removed from this Bible that's been distributed worldwide. That is what was removed. And that was what made the ten spies conclude that if they come there, the land is going to kill them. They are, they are not, they are, their offspring will die, their cattle will die, they are not going to survive it. That is not a good land. Okay, let me use it another way. There's something, you know, the Africans call it the evil forest. If you watch Nigerian movie, they want always talk about evil forest. Exactly. Now, they say that there, this evil forest, no living person goes there and comes out alive. That is a, an example of a land that divorces its inhabitants. So that is what the ten spies were thinking. That is an evil land that if you go there, human beings can survive there. That if giants cannot survive, they are dying. How much more them that is not that, that are not giants? Number two. Now the giants were mourning, they were in grief. They were occupied with burying their dead. So what they didn't even bother to look at them twice. That's the second point there. Then now the ten spies now say, even in their in, in their eyes, we were like grasshoppers because the giants ignored them. Can you see the miracles? Let me tell you, if if I almighty should open your eyes to see the miracles he does in your life every minute, every second of your life, you would always be filled with sincere gratitude to him. 
The same thing. If you, if I should explain, stop picking out the miracles he's been doing from the one which is not obvious, or which the Bible has removed a lot of it. Even like you say in the in when he was delivering them from Egypt, from his tribe, that it was ten plagues. It's not ten plagues. It was about four, five hundred, five hundred miracles he did in Egypt, not ten, as is written here. But let me not digress. So this was what the spies saw that made them bring an evil report. And that is why it is written. The letter kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. If you read the letter, you don't have the ruach in you to interpret to you. You're not reading life, you're reading this. It's the spirit that will give you life. And in the book of Proverbs, it's written, Don't that spirit, wisdom. The work is overstanding. So, this is the story of the ten spies. And then the story of the twelve spies. So this Shabbat is a great Shabbat, auspicious Shabbat, a Shabbat of good news. What you believe is what comes to you. And as far as you believe the Torah, nothing bad will happen to you. Nothing bad will come to you. As far as you believe in the word of your Creator, as far as you believe good reports, as far as you believe His promises in your life, then don't expect wrath from him, but only Beraka. But when you follow the majority, you listen to the majority, you believe what the majority is saying, then you'll be punished through the majority. I hope we are going to be wise this Shabbat, and we are going to re rejoice knowing that our Creator has great things in store for us in the land that He is sending us to. This Shabbat, should not be a Shabbat of sorrow. Should not be a Shabbat of happiness, but a Shabbat of joy. Shabbat Shalom.